दिस इज वाल्मीकि रामायण सीजन सिक्स एपिसोड टू लंका सिटी ऑफ गोल्ड हनुमान had successfully crossed the great ocean he then made his way inland through a scenic landscape of forests and orchards lakes and ponds and shortly he came upon the city of lanka and what a sight it was girimur nisthitam lankam purim akashagamiva lanka built on a mountain appeared to be touching the sky a spectacular city that seemed to almost float in the air a moat went all around the city and behind it was an imposing boundary wall many well armed rakshasas stood menacingly guarding the gates and the ramparts the boundary wall itself was inlaid with gold The city was incredibly well built Achintyam Sukratam It exuded power grandeur and wealth Hanuman was struck by doubt Agatya pih harayo bhavishyanti nirarthaka Even if the Vanarami could get here it would be pointless How could the Rakshasas be defeated but then he reminded himself to stay focused on the task at hand finding sita and for that he had to first get inside the city without getting caught by the guards anuman decided to wait for nightfall later as he made his way through the darkness a guard suddenly caught him and this was no ordinary guard she said aham hi nagari lanka swayam eva plavangam o vanar i am the city of lanka herself hanuman tried to talk his way through but the guard was not impressed and she attacked him hanuman overpowered her and she was forced to let him go what a poetic way of giving a glimpse into what will happen later in the sundarkand the rakshasas of lanka will manage to capture hanuman but in the end hanuman will prevail hanuman then stealthily leapt on to the boundary wall near the northern gate and went inside he saw a city that was well laid out with beautiful broad avenues praviveshu purim ramyam Pravibhakta Mahapatham Remember Valmiki had described Ayodhya also in a very similar manner in the Balakand Lanka had row upon row of tall white mansions 7 and 8 stories high Sapta bhauma ashta bhauma ischa The beautiful buildings had pillars of gold and silver windows inlaid with crystals and archways decorated with gold the city dazzled in the moonlight hanuman went along the rajmarg and observed life in lanka at night ravan's warriors lined the rajmarg keeping a close watch on things avoiding them hanuman went past the grand mansions men and women were out and about having a good time in the courtyards and on terraces the party was on hanuman heard the tinkling of waist bells and anklets and the sound of many a musical instrument there was laughter and music everywhere valmiki has given a detailed and fascinating description of this night scene it shatters many a stereotype in popular culture rakshasas are always shown as dark skinned but while that was true for ravan there were other rakshasas who were fair rakshasas are usually imagined as monsters crude fearsome and ugly but according to valmiki 
the Rakshasas of Lanka were Virupan, Surupan, Bahurupan. Some looked hideous, while others were very handsome. They came in all forms. Some wore animal skin, but others donned fine clothes and exquisite jewelry. Some very drunk Rakshasas talked incoherently and abused one another. But at the same time, Shushrava Japatan Tatra, Mantran Raksho Grheshuvai, Swadhyaya Niratansh Chaiva, Yatudhanan Dadarshasah. In many houses, Hanuman saw Rakshasas studying scriptures and chanting sacred verses. How is that possible? I thought the Rakshasas did not adhere to dharma, to any rules. How come they were studying scriptures? This is a very important point. So before we look further for Sita, let us relook at this question. Who were the Rakshasas? We saw previously how Rakshasas like Tataka, Virad and Kabandh were defined by their behavior, not by birth. All of them were born in different lands and in different communities. All three became Rakshasas because of their brutality and violence. But in Lanka, the word Rakshas is used more broadly to refer to Ravan's clan. And like any other clan or community, this one too had its mix of good and bad people. And therefore, we have a Rakshas like Vibhishan. Remember, Shurpankha had said in Panchavati that Vibhishan was unlike Ravan. He always followed dharma, always thinking about what was right and what was not. I understand now. Ravan was from the Rakshas clan and under him, Rakshasness meant a particular type of behavior, a disdain for rules, cruelty and violence. Yes, but always remember that Ravan's Rakshas clan was not racially different from the other communities living in India at that time, nor did it have different cultural roots. Ravan's father, Vishrava, was a Muni, not a Rakshas. But his mother, Kaikasi, was a Rakshasi. Obviously, Rakshasas were not a different race. Also, we find in the Ramayan plenty of evidence of the Vedic roots of Lanka's society. Later, we will see in Lanka Vedic altars and shrines, images of Lakshmi and people reciting the Vedas. Even now, Hanuman heard mantras and chants and he saw on the buildings the ancient symbol of auspiciousness, the swastika. Valmiki says, Raksho ganagruhaihi shubhaihi padma swastika saunsthitaihi The Rakshas houses were engraved with lotus and swastik symbols. Clearly, the fight with the Rakshasas was not a fight of one race against another. It was not a fight between Vedic and non-Vedic societies. Were the Rakshasas also known as Asuras? The conflict between Asuras and Devas refers to incidents much before Ram's time and the Rakshasas traced their lineage to the Devas. Therefore, the Rakshasas were not Asuras. However, the Rakshasas and Asuras behaved similarly, so the words are sometimes used interchangeably. With that understanding of the Rakshasas, let us now turn back to our story. In the next episode, we will see what happens as Hanuman continues to look for Sita and heads to Ravan's palace. Iti, ha, asa. That is how it happened. <laughs>